Good morning, everyone. I've had a great time talking to all of you. Obviously, a lot of passion in this room, a lot of great ideas. Um, I'm always well, uh, offering, if people want my email, you're welcome to have it. I love dialoguing with people. You have a problem or something you want, just someone else's advice on, you're welcome to ask me <clears throat> after the session. Um, I ask that you take the email versus giving me your card because I tend to lose things in my travels, but I'd love to be a resource. I think that's one of the great things about soccer is um, the collegiality and the opportunity to share ideas. And I, I know I was, had a lot of mentors and opportunities through Anson, who I played for and coached with, and other people that really helped me along my career or just sharing a, a situation with. So please take advantage of that if you would like. And this morning we're going to do a session on combination play. This is a session I do with our full um, Olympic or national team, but we, it's also, I've had a lot of coaches of younger players ask how to adapt some of the things we've done. This session I think you could do pretty much, you know, down to a U10 level. The difference is um, just sort of the level or the degree to which that you refine the details. If you remember yesterday I said, the game's the same, it's really the amount of information and detail that the better players can absorb and can execute. So a lot of these things, um, I thought one of the coaches had a great point um, in terms of how do you adapt things. I was giving an analogy that my six-year-old's in first grade is learning chemistry. Back in the day, I didn't hear anything about chemistry really till about high school. Well, they're learning solids, liquids, gases, about magnets, and it's at a very basic level but every year they'll be able to build on that foundation. So I'm a firm believer like this today's session, you can take parts of it and then build on it as you see these players over time. And like I said, it's something that I think could be good for U10 all the way up to a full Olympic level. And then just modify the amount of information you give based on their skill level or, and or you can modify the spaces if the space may be little too tight for execution, you might make it a little bit bigger for a, a younger age group. So just wanted to address that because I thought there were some great comments and questions on that. So start with where um, are my three, Morgan, Grace, and Madeline, we're gonna pop out here. So if you notice I have four grids, ladies, so when we split up, you're gonna go to the four grids that will in the first drill only accommodate 12 of you, and you can rotate, have a group rotate through one of them. So we're gonna use, what I've done is actually organize the grid so we're gonna be able to evolve through probably about 70% of the practice in one grid, although it's gonna change over the course of the session. So ladies, if you orient to the four orange cones and there's a yellow line, I'm gonna ask one of you to be on this line here, one on each side of her, on each side of the grid. So if you envision we're cutting the grid now in half, and all we're gonna work on to start with are passing angles. Big part of combining, so stay in the grid, is the ability to find this position that you need to get the ball in. So all I'm gonna ask you guys, it's all I'm gonna tell you now, is to, all you can do is run on the line, try to defend them. You're trying to get the ball back and forth between yourselves as often as possible. So if you knock it, I want you to get it back and that'll be a point. And just keep it going. If it goes out of bounds, we'll knock another one in, okay? So you can move, dribble, whatever. You just can't cross the line physically. Keep playing. Come on, she's not that good, is she? Come on, come on. I'm not gonna give them a tip yet, but there's something that they're missing right now. That we, and freeze, okay. All right, go back where you were, because I'm gonna help you out, because it just presented itself again. Okay, go back there. Okay, so part of combination play and part of the game period is knowing where to take up spaces. A lot of our young players take up what's called a dead space. Okay, go a little bit over where you were in the back. There you go, Grace. Um, where, where is the space right now? Where's the space? Right. So even though she's not there, you can play the ball there. So you just die the ball into that space for her. Okay? So see if you can layer that in. Here we go. And then there, I have one other tip. I'm going to see if I can give them a minute to sort it out. Okay, keep it going. Keep it going. I'm going to ask coaches, I'm going to ask you in about 30 seconds what, what's the next tip that needs to be put out there for them, help them out. Why are they making the defender's job easy right now? Okay, that's out, no point. Keep it going, keep it going. All 
Okay, good. Let me ask the ladies first. What's the rule? Sometimes we forget to explain what are we trying to accomplish in a session. We're firm believers. Before we start a session, we lay it out. We actually put it on their locker room so they know before they go out. We sit down. This is what we want to get out of this session, period, and why. So what do you think? Why? What's the goal of combination play? Any of you guys, young ladies, know? What's the goal of combination play? Why combination play? You're teaching your players combination play. They should know why. What is the goal of com combining? What's the goal? Don't look to your coach. I saw that. No help, you. What's the goal? All right, coaches, you want to help them out? What's the goal of combination play? All right, come on. I know, you, I know it's early. Help me out. I want to be out here. On, coach. To beat the defender. I mean, it sounds simple, but sometimes we forget and our players don't understand, they don't think about why they're doing something. The number one goal, and that if they keep this in their mind, it'll help them. Like when they have a wall pass and the defender goes with the runner, they're going to know to go because their job is just to get past that defender. So right now what's happening is, so now you forever, from this point forward, you understand it's to beat the defender. Number one goal is to beat the defender. So part of why you're making it easier, okay, look at, she can, she can cover that angle pretty quickly, right? By the time I get a ball into that space, you can get there. Get there, go ahead, okay? Right? So the, if the goal is to beat them, you've got to commit them to the ball. It's going to make it much harder for her. And so what's happening is you guys are staying so far away, by the time the ball gets there, she can get there. So try now committing her by going closer to her. Add a little deception. Good, good. That's okay, new ball for them. Why don't you guys have a ball ready? So pop out, one of you pop out, have a ball ready every time. So April or one of you pop out, have a ball ready. Here we go, a little more lively, here we go. Get around her, good, and move off. Every time you knock it, now I want you to move, move, move. Okay, so now you have to find the balance. Now you may be getting a little too close. So she's got longer legs, you're gonna have to find the balance of being too far away and too close. Okay, here we go. Oh, she's just good, I think, is the bottom line. She's just good, Morgan. Okay, so I think they're, they're going to have to play the space a little bit more. Move, move, move. The other thing is deception. Some of you guys are looking right where you want to play it. Add some deception in. Add some deception. Okay, ladies, run, split. There's three grids, four grids left on the run, because we're only going to do this one more minute. Okay, let's rotate out. Grace, why don't you pop in? Morgan out. Okay, let's see if we can't get going. Let's see if we can get some combination here. Here we go. Knock it in. You have to stay on the line, Grace. Good. And move. I'll get it right back to you. That's the only way you get a point. Good idea. Here we go. Keep it going. Use some deception. Look like you're going to play there outside the foot the other way. Here we go. Be deceptive. Okay. Off the ball. Get into the space. Her vision. Get in her vision. You gotta let the ball work more. Let, uh, okay, instead of, one, instead of receiving that there, why not just one touch it? Well, you've got her running. Instead, you take a touch, she's back in shape again, okay? So like on a wall pass, sometimes you settle it, you're gonna lose the opportunity to get behind them. So see if we can't let the ball now work a little faster for you, okay? Here we go. Can you get it back? Can you get it back? Get it back quicker, quicker. Okay, knock it out and play. Good. All right, I'm lucky. If she's blocking the space, put it in the space where the player should be. Good, and get it right back. All right, good try, good try. That's okay. Where's your angle? Find your angle for her. Good. Good, good. One point, good. Get right back. Ah. One touch, I think. One touch. Okay, better. Now they're finding it. So this is a really fundamental skill for them to be able to know what space to take up to combine around a player. Last 30 seconds. Okay, good idea to diet in space. I like that. Okay, don't telegraph where you're going. Oh, I like it. Good deception. Excellent job, Morgan. Okay, good idea. Just the way of the past. At least you're seeing it now. The other thing, ladies, what I'm going to keep playing, I'm going to introduce for the coaches is, if you do have a higher level player, 
If I'm going to pass across my body, that's going to make it more easy, uh, easier for her to intercept versus using the outside of my foot. Okay, so the ball can be a little bit further away from her than having to come across my body. Okay.